Um, you know, in terms of touring, bands aren't helping the planet that much. <laughs> Actually, my first question is for you, uh, Joe. Do you remember the motivation that you had to start study uh, environmental studies? To study some environmental studies? Um, I don't remember why, but I was uh, about 18 and I just was obsessed with like, it was like hip right then, right, environmental uh, things. And I used to, well, I still do, I couldn't drive so I'd ride a bike. I'd walk seven miles to work every day through the park and I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really see this through and study and get a degree in it. And by the end of the degree, uh, I thought there's no hope. So <laughs> let's become musicians. It, has he become more cynical since you, you know him? No, I'm about the same. <laughs> Couldn't get worse. <laughs> Couldn't get worse, impossible. Maybe less. <clears throat> yeah, but there's no hope left, you say. It, 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 do you say, with your maybe your science study, then what's your biggest concern now? And uh, everything's fucked. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> no, I think the world will survive, but it'll be different, and millions of people will suffer terrible volcano burnings. Things like that. That's I don't know. I don't see us like all uh, conserving enough to really keep things nice for humans. Co uh, the Kakalak will live on. The Kakalak. We'll see. Do you share his, his vision on that a little bit? Um, no comment. <laughs> no. I don't, I, I'm, I'm definitely um, not really thinking that. Yeah. Maybe no political views for me today. Okay, what does, do you see maybe, let's, let's leave it blank what it is, but does music help you in a way that, to clean up your sheet a little bit when it comes to that? I don't know, I guess, uh, I guess a lot of the time our job is to put a smile on people's face or, you know, play music to, so that you can experience an emotion, whether it be anger or happiness or whatever, and relate to it and somehow through music I think that makes well, it certainly makes me feel better, and I hope it makes other people feel better. So that's a positive, I'd say, to people, hopefully, if we're doing our job right. Um, you know, in terms of touring, bands aren't helping the planet that much. <laughs> they're flying a lot, and they're getting trains, and they're, they're burning a lot of fuel, so... Uh, I think if I suddenly started preaching to be hugely green, I'd be a complete hypocrite. Um, you know, I try and like, recycle Hypocrisy. a bit. Hypocrisy! Yeah, Woo. I'm a sort of recycling hypocrite, I suppose. <laughs> I'm yeah, honest. I'm the same. I cycle everywhere. I've got my bicycle, like, go to Los Angeles on a jumbo jet and yeah. then cycle. So I don't use the Hummer. You, you level it out, that's right. Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but for, for you, he mentioned putting a smile on, on somebody's face. <clears throat> Is there something for you that you, with your lyrics, you want maybe to put a smile? on people's face, but also something else? Do you want also to put a thought in their head? Or is that yeah, not? well, I, you know, I like being challenged and having, it can be uh, uh, happy to express anger and happy to express uh, difficult, complicated thoughts. So, yeah, it's, I mean, mostly it should be about feeling good, I think. Even when we're singing about war or like depression, it's still fun while we're doing it, so. Mm. It's at least inspiring times then uh, today. Yeah, everything, <laughs> I mean, it's always, it's, it's always insane. Like, we used to think that the dragons would eat us, and now we're like, there's no dragons left because we've killed them all. Uh, something else will eat us, so there's always some shit going down. Yeah, for this record, I heard you, you rented out a New York basement, if I'm correct. To That's right, yeah. Was that, the, was that the place where the first structures of the song would get alive, or was it already yeah. some pre-work done? Before? Yeah, no, the, uh, there was a few bits that we'd done on the road. The first song on the album uh, sort of came from uh, being on tour, but it evolved so dramatically and went through so many sort of different phases of change that it, it feels like a completely different song now. But the rest of the album was done, um, there you go. The album was uh, mostly written in this basement in New York, and I'd say a lot of it was done the first week, actually. Yeah. Maybe there's, a lot of the songs were the very first four or five days we were there, and we just played 10 hours a day, chucked it all on a laptop, the next morning we'd listen through for the little bits that seemed like good song ideas and try to develop them. Um, it also helped that we, we booked a show at the end of the week, um, like a small club show at Arlene's Grocery, so it, it kind of forced us to have to finish the songs, because we wanted to play all these new, new material to people to see whether they liked it and it, feel how it felt, you know. Is planning the show, is that uh, to maybe uh, 
save yourself from a trap? <coughs> Could you maybe get caught up too much in it, in writing songs that it takes? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think there's a trap, and I think there's also a trap mainly in not finishing the songs. You can just go mental yeah. and just uh, spend forever and be like Peter Gabriel or something with your 10-year album. Yeah, which is fine if it's amazing at the end, but yeah. that's a lot of pressure. So it's yeah, it's awesome just to go out, be like, right, the song goes like this. <laughs> Do you like it? Yes, you do. Done. It's a song. Let's yeah. do another one. Uh, yeah, instead of just going mental.